In this video, I'm gonna show you how we built this kitchen module in our DIY transit camper van conversion. Let's get started. For this build, we made a model and cut list in SketchUp and labels to keep track of the pieces. We cut our larger pieces of half inch birch with a circular saw and then cut our smaller pieces with the table saw and we're left with a bunch of rectangles. Once our pieces were cut, Steph made all the pocket holes we needed with our Craig pocket hole jig. While Steph drilled, we glued the module bottom to the large side panels. And then we clamped and secured everything with the Craig pocket hole screws. Using the same method, we glued, clamped, and screwed the rest of the top rails and drawer supports for the kitchen module. Next, we slid in our refrigerator so that we could measure where our trim pieces would need to go. Then we attached those with glue and finish nails. Next, we attached the cabinet base with glue and Craig screws, and then started on our drawers. Now this drawer specifically will have a space cut out for our sink drain. And then we made the rest of our drawers and even one specifically for a trash bin. And just like that, we are ready for edge banding and finishing. For finishing the edges of our plywood, we used half inch wide edge banding that has heat activated adhesive on the back. Next, we sanded all the pieces with 220 grit sandpaper and an orbital sander. And then we finished with paste wax by rubbing it on, letting it dry for a half hour or so, and then buffing it off. Next, it was time to add our drawers. We flipped over our module and used a spacer to position our top drawer slide and secured the slide with screws. And then just repeated the same process on the other side. Using a spacer rather than measuring makes it easier to get the slides perfectly straight and equal on either side. And then we use the same method for all the other drawer slides in the rest of the module. Next, it's time to secure the slides to the drawers themselves. We placed spacers between the bottom of the drawer and the bottom of the cabinet and screwed the slides to the drawer. And then we added our drawer face frame with glue and finishing nails. And then used the same method for the next drawer and the next face frame. And with the first couple of drawers in place, we flipped the module over and added our top drawer. Next, we added our false drawer faces with finishing nails before adding our drawer faces to the actual drawers using five business cards here as a spacer. For the other top drawer face, it will simply tilt out with a sponge tray since the sink will be right behind it. We added our hinges and our drawer face, but it was making some contact to the face, so we used the table saw to add a beveled edge. With all the drawers all wrapped up, we're now ready to move on to our latches. We used a spacer here, so the height of our latches were the same on each drawer. And then we drilled our pilot holes and used a hole saw, making sure to only cut through the drawer itself. And then used a smaller hole saw for the drawer face on the other side. Now we're using the same marine latches as the rest of the cabinets in the van, and they simply attach with screws from the back. And then we glued and screwed our latch catch in place so that the latch has something to grab onto. And before we wrapped up for the day, we added a grommet to pass wires through the side of the cabinet, and now we can add our under cabinet lighting. We loosened the screws on the solderless LED connectors, stripped back some insulation on the wires, and inserted our positive and negative wire, and tightened down the screws. And then we added some heat shrink and wire loom to clean up the wires. Next, we fed the wires through a hole in the bottom of the cabinet. We loosened the other two screws on the connector, and inserted our LED strip paying special attention to positive and negative. We removed the adhesive and stuck the strip down to our lighting track and added some clamps to keep the wire in place. 
Now we're gonna have lights on all sides of this kitchen module, so we used L connectors at the corners. And then we stuck our diffuser down and used a roller to put it in place. The lights will be powered by the lower switched Anderson port inside the plumbing enclosure. So we crimped on some Anderson pins to the other side of the positive and negative wires. And then we put those pins into the housing, which are now ready to be plugged into our switched Anderson port in the van. Next, we started making our back panel for the module with an opening and door to slide the gray water tank in and out as needed. We sanded, added paste wax, and then glued the panel in place and added finished nails to hold as the glue dried. We used a rivet gun to attach the hinges that will allow the back door to swing open and closed. And then we added a marine latch in the same way as all the others on the module. Now there was a bit of a gap between the latch and the panel, so we just added a spacer here for the latch to grab onto. At this point, we also used a hole saw and a dremel to attach a vent to the side of the module for the fridge. We're using a one and a quarter inch thick butcher block for our countertops in the van. We cut it to size with a circular saw and started making our cutouts for the sink and the induction stove using a circular saw and jigsaw. And we use the sink cutout to make a cutting board to place inside the sink when we're not using it for a bit of extra countertop space. And then we sanded everything down and added two coats of Danish oil to finish and buff it off once dry. While the Danish oil dried, we rolled up some plumber's putty into this cool snake shape, wrapped it around the drain, and installed it in our sink. And tightened it down from the back, then removed the excess putty. We added our sink trap on the bottom and then added our hoses and connectors to drain our sink water into our seven gallon gray water tank. And then we attached our faucet to the sink. Next, it was time to attach the brackets that will secure the cabinet to the L-Track on the floor of the van. We made these off camera, but they are simply two inch by two inch by eighth inch aluminum angle, cut to size, drilled for our L-Track hardware, and spray painted black. We also have one for a little higher up for the wall L-Track. We are using a DC powered isotherm refrigerator for this build, but the wires were a bit short, so we needed to extend them. For that, we simply added some butt splice connectors to our positive and negative wire and added additional wire. And then we added some wire loom and heat shrink to clean it up. And then added lever nuts at the ends to be connected later to our constant on Anderson port. We wanted to install a 120 volt outlet in this module for kitchen appliances and for the passenger seat when it's turned around, but needed to make sure that it would fit above the fridge and below the top drawer as we only had millimeters to spare. After checking our measurements, we made our pilot hole and used a hole saw for the cutout. We secured the 120 volt outlet and reinstalled our fridge vent below. And then we put our fridge back in place and secured it to our trim pieces with screws. With the Danish oil dried and the countertops buffed, we attached our sink to the butcher block. The sink comes with mounting hardware and simply tightens down onto the underside of the cabinet. We tightened those down and then moved the countertop very gracefully onto the kitchen module probably should have asked for help here. Once in place, we used our angled drill bit to drive in four screws in the front and a long driver for the screws in the back. We put the module into the van and slid it into place, securing the brackets to our L-Track hardware. And then we added some super glue to our induction cooktop to keep it from bouncing around and placed it on the countertop.
we push the wire from the induction cooktop and 120 volt outlets through our grommets along with our wires for the refrigerator and under cabinet lights. This Anderson connector goes to the switched Anderson port for the under cabinet lights. These get constant power which are powering the fridge, which gets spliced into this Anderson connector that's going to our water pump, and then our 120 volt plugs go into this 120 volt outlet. The Anderson port is way down at the bottom and impossible to see, so you'll just have to take my word for it that they're connected. Next we connected our sink to our plumbing enclosure, and then we slid in our 7 gallon gray water tank and secured it with a bungee, and connected it to the sink drain. And just like that, our kitchen module is all wrapped up. For a van, we have an absolutely massive sink, a clean looking induction cooktop powered by our house battery bank, a sleek 2.3 cubic foot DC powered refrigerator from Isotherm, and all kinds of storage space for pans, silverware, cooking utensils, and a nice and easy way to access our gray water tank from the outside of the van. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.